this uh, topic is joint work with uh, Valerie Mueller at Arizona State, uh, Shaya Dow, University of Maryland, and Clark Gray at the uh, University of North Carolina in, Cap in Chapel Hill. So what's the motivation for our paper? Um, climatologists, climate scientists uh, expect Africa to experience warming in excess of uh, two standard deviations uh, in, the, in the coming century. And uh, heat, we know that heat stress has adverse effects on um, agricultural productivity. Um, particularly, uh, there's a lot of uh, evidence to support this. And also, perhaps, in, there's some emerging evidence that heat actually can uh, adversely affect productivity even in non-agricultural sectors. Um, and uh, so as adapt adaptation is a key component of uh, UN FCCC agreements and development assistance in dealing with climate change, uh, and one key component of that is how workers will adapt to, to changes in temperature. And this worker response is not very well understood, and particularly in Africa. So our research is attempting to fill that gap. So what do we do? We take individual uh, panel data from the Living Standards Man Measurement Survey. Uh, so it gives us uh, 55, approximately 55,000 person years of data, uh, working ages uh, 15 to 65. Uh, and we look at participation in seven different uh, occupations over the previous 12 months. So we divide these into uh, by sector, agriculture, non-agriculture, whether they migrate, uh, whether they were in school or whether they were unemployed. Um, and then within agricultural and non-agricultural, we divide that between wage employment and self-employment. It's important to note that uh, these activities are not mutually exclusive, so the surveys tell us basically what it, have you engaged in one of these activities in, in the past 12 months. So uh, many people uh, participate in multiple activities. Also, migration that we look at is not permanent. It's basically did you migrate uh, out of your home uh, in the past 12 months. And our data comes from four East African countries, Malawi, Uganda, Tanzania, and Ethiopia for the years indicated up there. So we take this uh, individual occupation data and we merge it with climate data taken from NASA's uh, Modern Era Retrospective Analysis for Research and Applications. Uh, basically, it's a pretty fine uh, resolution uh, climate data. So we take the mean of monthly values over a 24-month period uh, preceding the interview month. Um, this 24 period allows for lagged effects so that, <clears throat> for example, if there are extremely high temperatures a year ago, that could affect the current decision. So we allow for that to happen. Uh, then we derive z-scores, basically the mean over the standard deviation, to characterize uh, deviations in climate relative to the historical uh, expectations basically all other previous 24-month periods uh, in the previous 14 years. So we do all this with, again, our goal is to see how extreme temperatures affect worker behavior. Do they sw <clears throat> So why do we do this? So this will help us anticipate where the needs are for climate adaptation resources are likely to be highest. So we want to be able to answer questions like, do increasing temperatures lead to productivity shocks that could provoke rural outmigration. So there's considerable literature looking at whether uh, you know that we expect people to be, leave the countryside to go to the cities. Um, will it cause a shift from agricultural to non-agricultural economic activity. Will it cause a shift from self-employment to wage employment? So, for example, if extreme temperatures lead to loss in livestock, livestock or farmers need to basically eat their seed, um, will they be able to? Will they be less willing to? Uh, or will, less able to uh, be self-employed and force them into wage employment? Um, will, will these climate shocks cause rural unemployment? These are the type of questions we want to be able to answer. So um, our theoretical framework is based on a standard utility maximization problem. So workers allocate their time across various activities to maximize their utility from consumption and leisure. And uh, I won't go through the math here, but basically, um, this enables to get us some uh, first order conditions, which we then are able to use in our econometric analysis. And uh, one result from the theoretical analysis that's new in this literature is that we find that relative, not absolute, climate productivity impacts determine the climb, time and allocate to each activity. So what do I mean by that? So suppose that... Um, a uh, uh, temperature shock adversely affects both 
agricultural activity and a non-agricultural activity. That doesn't mean that the amount of time a worker employs in those activities will necessarily decline. Why? Because it matters which activities hit hardest. So if the agricultural activities hit more, more adversely than the non-agricultural activity, you might see an increase in working in the non-ag activity, even if climate adversely affects it, because of this substitution between activities. And so that also has some other implications, that you may have nonlinear effects of temperature shocks on participation decisions. So a small increase in temperature could lead to a decline in, uh, in say, agricultural employment, whereas a larger increase in temperature could cause it to go back up. And that's what this graph here is basically showing, is uh, due to this substitution between the two activities, so the, the straight lines represent the marginal impact of temperature, say, on two activities. It shows that at a certain point, you'll switch from one to another. So the basic point here is that uh, you need to allow for nonlinear impacts of climate on, uh, on, these on participation. And another uh, conclusion that we're able to show is that, so that conversely means when you're looking at participation data and you're trying to infer whether climate is having a negative impact or not, you can't take as evidence that climate is having an adverse impact in a particular sector in isolation. Only uh, changes in overall unemployment uh, give you concrete evidence of an adverse climate impact. And this is a bit different from what we've been seeing in previous literature where there has uh, been um, literature showing a nonlinear impact of climate, of temperature, say, on productivity. But basically, it's uh, looking at dividing the world into relatively cool countries and well, relatively warm countries. So the idea in this previous literature is that if you have an increase in temperature, that can be beneficial for colder countries, like in Europe, but uh, adverse impact on warmer countries, uh, typically in the south. And our results are showing that um, you can have nonlinear impacts like this even in warm countries that you would expect from this previous literature to have a monotonic uh, impact. And then our final result, which I won't dwell on too much here, is how, so our data is participation decisions. The theory is in terms of continuous hours in a particular activity, and we show how to basically translate the theory from uh, a continuous decision of how many hours you're going to work in each activity to something that better matches our data, which is simply, did you engage in this activity in the previous uh, 12 months? So our, uh, just our basic data, um, so important things to notice here is that you know, wage labor is not very common either in rural or urban areas um, in the agricultural sector. Uh, second thing to notice is there's a lot of uh, agricultural self-employment, obviously in rural areas, but surprisingly, um, well, maybe not surprisingly, but 51% uh, of uh, respondents in urban areas are engaged in self-employed agriculture. Um, Non-agricultural activity, uh, much lower in rural areas and urban areas, uh, but still it's dominated by self-employment. Migration is roughly consistent, around 10% uh, across rural and urban areas, uh, and schooling is a little bit less. Also, these years that we're looking at, so the, these climate variables indicate that um, the years in our study were slightly warmer than uh, previous years and with uh, less rainfall. So our main regressions look at a linear probability model where the left-hand side is uh, an indicator of whether or not the respondent engaged in the given activity. And then the right-hand side variables are basically temp the clim our climate variables, temperature and, um, and rainfall. And the, this basically the square terms are the way we capture this nonlinearity that I mentioned in the theoretical discussion. We also have individual fixed effects. Um, we have time trends. We run various robustness checks uh, with uh, linear, common linear time trends, linear country time trends, common quadratic, anyway, a whole host of different time trends, and this doesn't really affect. Our results are robust to this, uh, these uh, variations. We cluster our standard errors by uh, the enumeration areas of the surveys, and we use sampling and inverse probability weights to account for attrition, basically for people that don't, uh, that drop out of the survey over time. And all of our results are robust to this. Finally, uh, since we have uh, seven outcomes, basically these are seven different regressions, um, statistically, 
that increases your probability of getting a, a significant result just by luck because the more regressions you run, the more likely you are just to have something. So we adjust our uh, inference uh, for these false discovery rates. Okay, don't squint too hard here. I'll, I'm going to zoom in on these, but just to give you a flavor of where the results are strongest, and I guess it's just too blurry to see anyway. Um, the important thing here is that our big results are in the middle, which is on the non-agricultural self-employment. We see a strong uh, decline both in uh, urban and rural areas. And the other thing to note is the other big effect is on the far right, which is unemployment, which is we have a strong positive result uh, in urban areas. And migration also is a strong, anyway, I'll zoom in on these. Um, so our first set of results is that um, high, high, high temperatures cause a decline in agricultural wage labor. But as I mentioned earlier from the descriptive statistics, although this is statistically significant, it's not very important just because so few people are involved in this. But uh, so we do see a decline in agricultural wage employment both in rural and urban areas. We see high te at high temperatures a decline in urban out migration. So sorry, with these graphs on the horizontal axis, we have our temperature Z scores. And on the vertical, vertical axis is the participation rate. Sorry, so going back to the wage employment. So basically, uh, as temperature increases, we see a decline. It's roughly linear in urban areas, and it's uh, quadratic in rural areas. And these are both uh, statistically significant. For migration, the box indicates uh, results that are statistically significant. So um, in urban areas, we do have a quadratic uh, shape, which means that at high temperatures, we do see a steep decline in uh, urban migration. Whereas in rural areas, uh, there's a slight increase at high temperatures, but it's not statistically significant. Breaking down the migration uh, by gender, we find that uh, the migration results hold basically for male migrants, for male respondents, uh, but they're not significant for female. And we think this could be the fact that a lot of female migration might be due to non-economic reasons uh, for going to marriage or uh, dealing with uh, fam or visiting family in other regions, um, whereas this, uh, this might not be so prevalent for the male. OK, these are, our big result is on non-agricultural self-employment, where we see this is a surprise to us that uh, with extreme temperatures, we see a pretty sharp decline, both significant both in rural and urban areas of non-agricultural self-employment um, with temperature. And then the other is that in urban areas, we see a pretty big increase in unemployment at high temperatures, but not in rural. So putting it back together, putting this together, what, what this is a bit puzzling for us. We're, first of all, our our priors going into this was we expected to see the big impacts in rural areas, not in urban areas, and the big impacts in agriculture, not in non-agriculture. If anything, we expected to see a shift from agriculture to non-agriculture, whereas we, we actually see the, a bit of the opposite. So why, um, why do we see unemployment in urban areas? So in our theoretical model, we do a bit of an extension showing how, um, since we have multiple activities, there can be a backstop activity. So basically where um, the idea is if you have, say, some plot of land you have access to for agricultural production, even if the temperature adversely affects your productivity, you may stop um, selling agricultural goods uh, for cash, but maybe still work your farm for subsistence, um, in which case Despite the adverse productivity impact, you're always, if you have access to land, you're always going to work even in extremely high temperatures, at least a little bit. Because remember, our surveys are, did you participate in this activity at all, not how much did you participate. So if in rural areas, you have access, people have more access to land, and they're able to work on, for subsistence levels, but in urban areas, you don't, this could be a reason why we see the upshoot in unemployment in urban areas, because they don't have access to this backstop activity. OK, uh, and to, so that's our hypothesis. So um, again, just to, to substantiate that, now looking at the, the data, we see that in urban areas in general, um, both urban and rural areas, agricultural self-employment is not sensitive to temperature. So you see these are pretty straight lines. 
um, and they're not statistically significant. So what this tells us is this hypothesis about some, at least some subsistence uh, being non-sensitive, subsistence work in agriculture not being sensitive to temperature is held up by the data. And also that in rural areas, you have much higher access to agricultural self-employment than in urban areas. So to further delve into this puzzle a little bit deeper, then we wonder, is there some sort of barrier to entry to agricultural self-employment uh, in urban areas? We can't observe this directly. Instead, we divide our sample into two groups. So in one group is respondents that report having um, worked in agricultural self-employment at the same time as working in some other activity. And we call those people, these people by definition have access to agricultural self-employment. And then people who never um, participate in agricultural self-employment. And so our question then is if we think that uh, access to, or lack of access to agricultural self-employment is what's causing the unemployment rates, then we would expect a differential response to temperature between these two groups. If on the other hand, access to agricultural self-employment was not a barrier, then both groups should have an equal probability of becoming unemployed. So once we divide our sample in these two, two groups, we find pretty stark results that the probability of not being employed is a function of temperature for even for urban areas, for people that have access to agricultural self-employment, uh, unemployment is not sensitive to temperature. But for the people that do not have access to agricultural self-employment, we see a very significant uptick, uptick in uh, unemployment as temperature rises. Uh, for rural areas, we get a similar uh, outcome. Uh, for the rural people that have access to ag self-employment, again, there's almost no impact of temperature. These are not significant. There is a slight uptick, but that's not significant either. The only one that's significant is the urban people that don't have access to, uh, to ag self-employment. OK, so, um, so then the question is, so we, that's our puzzle about why unemployment goes up in urban areas, but uh, not rural areas. Then the other puzzle is, why do we see a decrease in non-agricultural self-employment? So again, we expect there to be an adverse productivity shock of high temperatures on, on agriculture, on plant output. So again, our prior would be that would mean people would switch to non-agricultural activity, but in fact, we see a decline. So in order to delve deeper in this puzzle, what we do is we divide non-agricultural self-employment into two subcategories, one that uses uh, agricultural inputs intensively and one that doesn't. So think of uh, maybe vendors, people that uh, buy agricultural products from the countryside and resell it in the city. Um, and so our thought here is that for these type of activities, uh, the agricultural inputs are highly complementary to labor. You can't substitute more labor for fewer um, vegetables if you're a vendor. And so when we divide up uh, the non-agricultural sector in these two subgroups, depending on how they use, how intensively they use agricultural inputs, this bears our, our hypothesis in that, so on the left-hand side is urban area, the right-hand side is rural area, and both rural and urban areas. The uh, solid line is non-agricultural um, self-employment that does not, I'm sorry, that does use agricultural inputs, and the dashed line is ones that don't. And so we see as temperature goes up, a very striking decline in self-employment in those activities that use agricultural inputs, and actually the opposite, an increase uh, in uh, non-ag that does not use uh, agricultural inputs. So there appears to be some degree of substitution there within the non-agricultural sector, uh, but not enough. So on the whole, once you put these two groups together, uh, non-agricultural self-employment declines with temperature increases, extreme temperatures. So in conclusion, at high temp so our story is at high temperatures, we see an increase in urban unemployment. Um, and part of, oh, sorry, I didn't dwell too much on the migration, which I should have given this a migration con conference. But um, our migration result was that in urban areas, we actually see an increase in migration at moderate temperatures. So, and a decrease as uh, temperatures get extremely high. 
So what's going on here? We believe this is consistent with other literature that's found that actually a lot of, instead of inducing high temperatures inducing migration from the countryside to the urban areas, we find that at moderate temperatures, at good growing years, you see a temporary out migration from cities to the countryside for, um, for seasonal work, working in, in agriculture, and then they return. So when you have extreme temperatures, that causes a drop in agricultural productivity, which means that there are fewer opportunities for urban people to go out and work um, in, the, in the countryside. And that contributes, again, along with this drop in non-agricultural self-employment, this lack of migration opportunities uh, increases unemployment in urban areas. So we see this reduced migration and that in combination with this non-agricultural self-employment uh, reliant on agricultural inputs. Together, these two factors cause an increase in uh, urban unemployment. But we find rural unemployment is unaffected by extreme temperatures. And that, we believe, is due to this fact, the presence or the availability of this backstop activity of uh, subsistence agriculture. Um, although even in rural areas, we see that the, there's a decline in employment and non-agricultural self-employment. But again, since people are also they're employed in multiple activities, they can still remain um, working in this uh, agricultural self-employment sector. So again, our empirical results are consistent with this narrative of agricultural self-employment being a backstop application, um, regardless of temperature. So um, we have reduced demand for agricultural wage labor and temporary urban migrants, reduced demand for labor sectors, which is a combination for agricultural inputs, and reduced employment uh, in urban areas since relatively little access to ag self-employment. So our policy implications that as temperatures in East Africa increase with global climate change, we may not see this expected migration from rural to urban areas, but actually reduce migration from urban to rural areas. We may not see a shift from ag to non-ag self-employment, and we see an increased unemployment and the attendant social disruption primarily in urban areas. So there may be a greater need for adaptation resources in urban areas that we would have thought looking at the agronomic literature of climate impacts on agriculture. And I'll leave it there.